Find this clock and let the party begin. There you go. Now we get it. And that'll do it. So congratulations to Pete Carroll, his staff, and all of his Southern California Trojans. They win the Rose Bowl 28 to 14, and they will claim at least a share of the national championship no matter what happens. We bonded as a team and uh, we worked hard together, we sweated together. Growing up as a kid, you know, it was always an envy a dream to put on the Cardinal and Gold and walk down the tunnel at the Coliseum. I knew in my heart, and I, I hope I speak for the rest of the players on the team, that no one could take this national championship away from us. It's, it's very rewarding to know that hard work pays off. Since Pete Carroll got there, I think that uh, everybody totally respects USC and, and really looks at that program as one of the top two programs in the country right now. I don't think I could have written a better you know, way to go out. Boy, I don't know about you, but seeing that again sends shivers down my spine. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Ryan, and make no bones about it, the Trojans are back. From week one at Auburn to the Rose Bowl versus Michigan, let's take a look back at that national title run of 2003. Join me, Harry Callis, Pete Arbogast, many USC coaches and players as we review a truly great year. The Trojans are thriving, and the tradition continues. The traditional salute to Troy kicked off the 2003 season. On this hot summer night, alumni and players gather near Heritage Hall to celebrate the upcoming year. The hopes, dreams, and ambitions were mixed with memories and friendships of the past. Trojan head coach Pete Carroll tipped his hat to one of the institutions that has made USC athletics one of the nation's most revered, the Trojan marching band. Recognizing the greatest band in the world. The greatest band in the world. As irony would have it, one of the teams honored that evening was that from 1978. It's a squad that went 11 and 1, captured the Pac-10 title and won the Rose Bowl, and it was the last USC football team that won a national championship. You know, there's a lot of similarities between this team and the current USC football team. Uh, there's a big road game in the South that we played at Alabama in 1978. They were ranked number one in the country, and uh, we beat those guys. Charles White ran all over them. And of course the Trojans uh, this year, August 30th, go down to play the Tigers at Auburn. And who's going to win that game? Yeah. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, another similarity is, uh, you know, they had a first year starting quarterback and uh, who also happened to uh, be in the third year at USC and happened to be left-handed in 1978. That was yours truly. They got one this year named Matt Leiner. <laughs> Feeling that night was uh, one of excitement. Uh, when you think of the game of football, a lot of things come to your mind, but definitely the word passion, I think, embraces uh, Trojan football, and especially that night. And uh, Coach Carroll and uh, the young men of uh, Troy seem to have that, uh, that fire back in their belly. So uh, uh, even though we were 25 years uh, later, uh, or sooner, I should say, uh, we knew they had something special coming up. Upon their arrival in Alabama, the young USC team met another historic Trojan. The thing about games is that if you go out and play really, really hard and you play as well as you can and do the things you need to do, you never know when the hand of greatness is going to touch you. That night I had, I had no clue that anything like that was going to happen and that anything was going to happen in the past from that. Uh, from that one evening, it changed the face of college football in the Southeast Conference. Did I go down there trying to do that? No. <laughs> I just went on a road trip trying to play. My motivation was if I got in the game to play well enough so that I could play the next week. That was it. Only teams win. And it means something that you're here. And it's going to be important in your life in 32 years from now, like me and Sam, all broken down farts like we are, you're going to have something to say to somebody. Do you understand? Because all this glory you're showing now is fleeting. 
but you're going to remember the substance of your experience. And when you do things together, that's the thing that you remember the most in this world, when you do things with a fellow man. I mean, it felt great, you know, meeting them at Auburn. Uh, we got to meet a couple members of the team. Um, one member, I think, was Sam Cunningham. Another was Mr. Papadakis. And, uh, you know, just the passion and the experience and the, you know, the historic, you know, background that they gave us, you know, before the Auburn game, it was really just mind-blowing. You know, I was really getting emotional, and, you know, as well as other teammates of mine when they gave their speech and, you know, pretty much told us about, you know, how it was when they played, you know, back on that uh, championship team. The University of Southern California Trojans opened the 2003 college football season in the Deep South at Auburn University in Alabama. Yeah! Southern California was hoping to continue the dominant play that had made them the 2002 Orange Bowl champions. Pete Carroll and the USC Trojans hoped to rely on their formidable defense to keep them in ball games while allowing their offense time to gel. The game played at the end of August in the heat and humidity of Alabama marked the first ever visit of a Trojan team to Auburn's Jordan-Hare Stadium. Coming into the game, the Auburn Tigers were touted as the number one team in the nation by some collegiate prognosticators, and their defense, led by linebackers Carlos Dansby and Dontarius Thomas, were sure to cause the Trojans fits. On the first play of the game, the Trojan defense set a tone for the matchup that it would not abandon. A few moments later, Darnell Bing's interception of a Jason Campbell pass let Auburn know that it was the USC defense that would have to be reckoned with all afternoon. Matt Leinert's first collegiate pass was an auspicious sign of things to come for the Trojans. USC made a proud statement all day long putting to rest any thoughts that the Pac-10 was the home of weak defenses. Herschel Dennis's 14-yard run through the Auburn Tigers defense put the finishing touches on a 23-0 opening day cakewalk. Coaches did a great job. The players played great. We're excited. Let's praise these guys. If they want us to come back to the Southeast again, we'll come back. The BYU game, you know, we just came off a big win at Auburn. Um, that was the second game of the year. First home game, our first time in the Coliseum. After shutting out the Tigers, the Trojans came home to Los Angeles to play the BYU Cougars in the first ever meeting between the two schools. Game time temperatures were in the 90s, and the Trojans' defense immediately got heated up with a sack of the BYU quarterback early in the contest. It's fumbled by BYU and recovered by the Trojans. After a special teams fumble recovery, two well choreographed rollouts by quarterback Matt Leiner got the Trojans on the board. Bird comes across in motion. Leiner drops the pass, rolls left. Goes in the end zone. Touchdown, USC. Guess who? Hit Mike Williams with another touchdown catch. His second of the year, 16th of his career. Trojans have the lead. The Trojan offense seemed to be functioning in high gear as Terry Colbert's 48 yard touchdown reception put USC up 14 to nothing. Not to be outdone, USC defensive line got a score of its own on Omar Nazel's athletic interception and return for a score. The Trojans seemed well on their way to another easy victory, but the SC offense stalled, and the tenacious Cougars came back. Matt Payne's second field goal of the game from over 50 yards cut the score to 21 to 18 late in the fourth quarter. 7:05 to go in the ball game. Timeout. Well, that was a nice kick. I mean, can you believe this guy? But Matt Leinert's inspirational presence in the huddle urged his offense to a gut-check drive that culminated in this touchdown pass to number one, Mike Williams. Over to the right side, handoff. Herschel Dennis, student body right now. It's a keep for Leinert. Williams is open. Takes the hit. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, USC, and a great play action fake. The toss for Mike Williams, who is wide open. Another fourth quarter score by Herschel Dennis put the game out of reach and the Trojans secured the victory 35 to 18. 
to hold on and win. It was anything but easy, I'll tell you that. This game was a dog fight. Coliseum is our home, and, and uh, eventually we will own the home winning record. And that uh, we we will, we, will, we this is our standard that we're setting, starting from when, when Pete Carroll got here. The Sun Drench Coliseum in Los Angeles was the stage for a week three matchup against the University of Hawaii Warriors. After an early defensive struggle, the Trojan horses were off and running. Reggie Bush's two touchdown runs, coupled with fellow freshman Lundell White's two scores, showed off the Trojans' number one recruiting class in dazzling fashion. 10 5, dives into the end zone. Give him a 10.0 and give the Trojans six points. What a handoff. White, 15. He's still on his feet at the 10. He's still on his feet in the end zone. It's a touchdown, Lindale White and USC. The Trojans got it going through the air as well with Matt Leinert's 32-yard hookup to Kerry Colbert. Mike Williams' score at the end of the first half was a brilliant combination of the Trojan domination through the air and on the ground. When the quarterback depletes the opponent in such punishing fashion, it's sure to earn the respect of his team and the respect of the opposition lying pummeled on the ground. What a block by the quarterback, Matt Leiner, coming back the other way, and Reggie Bush made it happen right there. Jason Leach's interception return for a touchdown was the second score of the day for the defense. And Travis Tofi's safety put the exclamation point on a crushing, well-balanced performance by the Trojans, 61 to 35. It started out as a good Pac-10 contest. It ended up being one of the best college games of the year. Steve Fiziak and Tom Ramsey of Fox Sports Net called the action. Right now you got first down inside the five. They'll send McConan and Toler wide to the right side. One long setback, and that's the fullback, Chris Mandarino. Rodgers on the quarterback keeper. Dives is he in? Yes, he is. Kyle takes the early lead. The games to remember played in November, and that's when he sparkled. Liner down the middle, wide open, Dominic Bird, touchdown. Right now, Cal's committed to the run. They're just going to try and jam it up in there, Steve. Let Jamon do. Tailback with an offset eye. Play action pass. Garrett crosses wide open for the touchdown. Downfield, Rodgers. Touchdown, California, Paul Toller. They will give it to White. He hammers the middle and scores a touchdown. Rodgers puts his on. Rodgers escapes. Throws. Intercepted USC. Touchdown. Lofa to Tupu. Tyler Fredrickson with a 51-yard field goal attempt for the lead. It is long enough. Seconds left. Fredrickson. Wow. Blocked. USC has it. What a game. Robertson, play action. Watch to go. End zone. Touchdown. Wow. Jonathan McCona. Man. Oh, that's a big throw. the middle it goes USC will score Kerry Colbert Fredrickson from 38 yards out for a Cal victory it is good and Cal pulls the upset 
Uh, we jumped back. It didn't take us five or six minutes to tie that game up. We scored on defense and, 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 and took the ball right down the field and did real well. That really was important you know, because we, we, we need to be able to do that. It's not always going to go just the way you plan it, and, and you have to be able to come back and, and regroup, and we did that clearly and played a heck of a second half, you know, and, but uh, it, it came up short. Um, I don't think there was any great lessons taken out of that game, like, oh, boy, now we really know what, what we have to do. I, I didn't feel like that. I felt like we, re, you know, we had not played well, and it was uncharacteristic of our, of our style over the last couple of years. And in that, I was very alarmed by it because I didn't know if, if there was something was up with our football team. And the next week, going to Arizona State was enormous. After that point, you know, we had a team meeting, you know, players only meeting, and, uh, you know, the team kind of got together, and, and we just, I just remember the guys kind of saying that, you know, from this point on, we still could have a shot at what we want, you know, and, and that was going to the Rose Bowl or, you know, doing things like that, and we kind of stuck together and, and uh, worked hard from that point and just went forward. Arizona State game, that was, that was, um, that was a no-nonsense game. I mean, we were coming back, we were upset flat out. We were just upset. We, we couldn't believe that we had lost to Cal, and, and, and that, was, that was very disturbing to us because there was no way that they should have beat us. No way. The Trojans were off to set their season back on track with a trip to the desert to take on the Arizona State Sun Devils. A loss for either of these preseason Pac-10 favorites would almost certainly eliminate them from conference championship contention. Temperatures on the field were over 100 degrees on that October afternoon, and the Trojans seemed to show the lingering effects of their letdown at Cal on the opening kickoff. But the SC defense stiffened and kept ASU off the board. USC's ability to strike quickly was evidenced on these two passes to Kerry Colbert on successive plays to put the Trojans on top seven to nothing. This way, Williams right, play action, liner looking down the field all along. Kerry Colbert at the 20 yard line, catches it in stride at the 10, at the five, touchdown USC! 57 yards from Liner to Kerry Colbert. With quarterback Matt Liner out with an injury, the Trojans fell behind 17 to 10 in the third quarter. But the Trojans were out to showcase the heart of a champion. A hobbled Matt Liner returned to the lineup and hooked up with Brandon Hancock for this score on fourth and one to put the Trojans up 24 to 17. Leinert's 55-yard connection with Dominique Bird set up another field goal as USC began to pull away. The 45 shots to tackle 50. 45 still on his feet down the sideline at the 30. He's at the 25. Driven out of bounds. Dominique Bird inside the 20-yard line. The Trojan defense proved SC to be a dominant second-half team with bone-crushing hits and stifling style of play. The game also saw the emergence of true freshman Lendale White at running back. White's 141 yards rushing were an SC freshman record, and his two touchdowns helped to put the game out of reach. Delayed handoff, gets the call right up the middle, nobody touched him, and it's a touchdown, Lindell White and USC. He, he ran the ball really well, and the offensive line did a fine job and got us going in their attitude. We turned about our style offensively, and, and our consistency started to show up, and then we pounded them in the, in the second half, and, and uh, really with both sides of the ball and, and, and put together a good solid win. I think it was a very significant time also for Matt Leiner who was hurt and went out of that game and came back and had a great second half and, and uh, uh, you know when challenged in that situation we, our best showed up and that was really that was cool to see that. And Matt to be able to come back w with his ankle and his knee bothering him and to sit in the pocket and throw those passes I mean it, it sure I mean it, it showed us a lot it showed us that he wanted to win and he wanted to do as much as he possibly could to win. Uh, you know, coming into that game, a lot of people were questioning whether or not he was the quarterback for us. You know, after that game, I think, you know, he answered all the questions. Uh, you know, standing in the huddle, a lot of guys can't play hurt, and he was able to come out and improve, you know, not only to his teammates, but everybody else, that he had the heart and the desire to go out there and, and do whatever it takes to win the ball game. The Trojans return home from the desert to take on the Stanford Cardinal, USC's oldest rival, in a night game at the Coliseum. The Cardinal came into the game boasting the third best rush defense in the country, giving up a mere 56 yards per game. 
but they had not faced the likes of Lendale, White, and the Trojans. White would score two touchdowns and post over 100 yards against the high-ranked Stanford Rush defense. Coupled with Mike Williams' dazzling aerial conquest, the Trojans showed their opponents they would have to deal with a well-balanced offensive attack for weeks to come. Gary Colbert's 41-yard reception set up Lendale White's second touchdown of the night from three yards out. Yet again, the Trojans were getting it done with great offense and the suffocating and hard-hitting defense. USC's Wild Bunch 2 proved to be too much for the overwhelmed Stanford offensive line. Mike Williams' outstretched grab on the sideline came close to getting him his third touchdown reception of the game. But the boundaries of the field would not be enough to stop the inevitable from happening. Some of the greatest college football players ever known played in this setting. Back out. It's all about the attitude. Sending a message that first play. Run or pass. Send the message. First play tomorrow that those guys know it's going to be a long day because you guys have not come all this way just to play a game, but to physically dominate, beat them, and to win the football game. Because if you do that from the first play, the win's going to take care of itself. 80,795 fans were on hand to witness the latest installment of the greatest intersectional rivalry in college football. Most of them sat as mute witnesses to a balanced 80-yard Trojans drive to start the game. USC methodically picked the well-respected Irish defense apart, culminating in a touchdown pass from Matt Liner to Kerry Colbert to cap the drive. On the first drive for the Irish, they answered the Trojans with a score of their own on a touchdown run by number 22, Julius Jones. Not to be outdone, Reggie Bush flashed some brilliant moves of his own to get into the end zone once again for the Trojans. The run was aided by a nice upfield block by tight end Greg Gunther, springing Bush for the score. After an impressive kickoff return by Jones, the Irish answered the Trojans once again on this touchdown catch by Anthony Pisano to tie the score at 14. Despite the exuberance of the Irish faithful, the men of Troy would dominate the rest of the game. Notre Dame couldn't figure out a way to stop the impressive Trojan offensive attack. USC continued to unleash unstoppable weapons on their way to another score. Matt Leinert kept his feet moving and found awaiting Mike Williams in the end zone for his improv throw to put the Trojans up 21-14 still in the first quarter. On defense, the Trojans had had enough of the Irish and began to decipher Notre Dame's schemes. On the other side of the ball, the Irish had yet to figure out the Trojan offense as Matt Leinert hit Reggie Bush for 38 yards down the sideline. The dive for the pylon was impressive, but Bush was marked out of bounds at the six. Not to be dismayed, the Trojans quickly punched it in a short pass to Herschel Dennis for the score. Up 28 to 14, the Southern California defense began to make it clear that they would not surrender the lead. The Trojans were hitting on all cylinders on that fall afternoon. Here on a touchdown pass to Greg Gunther. The defense stayed tough all game long and kept the Notre Dame offense scoreless for the final three quarters. The Irish renowned running game was held in check all day, while the Trojans put up 551 total yards on offense. The running game got going on Bush's 58-yard run in the first quarter, and his fellow backs would continue the pounding of the Irish defense well into the fourth quarter. Lendale White's spinning, bruising run helped set up a well-executed pitch play to Herschel Dennis to put the Trojans up 45-14. It was the best showing ever for a USC team in South Bend and marked two years in a row of 31-point Trojan victories over the Irish.
With the win, USC improved to 6-1 and one on the year. We'll take this victory with them forever. forever. It's, a lifelong, it's a lifelong memory for them to have, to have got this accomplished. It hasn't happened very many times before. That score was almost the same as last year. You know what? It don't matter where we play, does it? No. It not matter who we play, does it? No. Exactly right. Bring them all on. No question, Pete Carroll has made us all proud. But even he'll tell you, you're only as good as your staff, and he has assembled quite a staff here at USC. These unheralded coaches have made quite an impact on the people around this program. I love this coaching staff. I mean, down to Coach Carroll, to Coach Ozeron, to Coach Burns, Rocky, everyone on this coaching staff, they're, they're not just coaches, they're friends. Every day Pete works at it and that he lets the staff know what we want to be like and we're very energetic. Pete has instilled a, a tremendous work ethic, a tremendous um, arena that allows for success and the players have bought in and I think the staff has, has just followed his lead and, and I think we're all together and have a, have a nice style. And you're as good as the people around you and Pete Carroll has done, you know, I, I, again I gotta keep tipping my hat off to him because he's really put together a tremendous staff of people that work around him and I think the thing that he does best is that he involves everybody. He involves his whole staff, and he really relies on his staff's input. Hey, guys, get your mind right. Just ball today. Just ball. Run hard and fall forward. Run hard and fall forward. Let's go. Hey, this week, you guys had words on Wednesday. That must have meant something serious business, because it was obvious from the way you acted and reacted from that time. It must have been something from your heart. It must have been something sincere because it showed up in the way you prepare and the way you approach this game. Today you have to act on that. Today you need to play as one heart as we know how to do. We need everybody celebrating with one another, supporting your partners the whole way through. There's a lot of people out there that don't want us to win this football game today, but that don't mean nothing if our heart's too big for it. So today, together, and always, from start to finish, we don't know where this football game takes shape. We don't give a f we just go out there and keep playing. Make sure we're together as one today. Let's go touch somebody and call them up. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You got coach, you're done. Three, one, two, three. Here we go. Let's go. Yes, Making its fourth road trip in a grueling five-week span, the USC Trojans were off to Seattle to take on the Huskies of Washington, where USC had not won since 1993. The Huskies got on the board first. But USC quickly responded with a pinpoint Leinert missile aimed between the eight and the three of Kerry Colbert's jersey to tie the score at seven. The SC defense knew it was in for a game when it suited up to take on Cody Pickett's Huskies, and they laid the wood to remind the opposition whom they were up against. Leach and Will Poole both converging to pop the ball out. And it was Leach the man to yeah. make the pop that made him drop it. Heavy pressure on Pickett forced him into an ill-advised throw that ended up in the arms of cornerback Ronald Nunn, who galloped 57 yards into the end zone for an SC score. Pass on third and 11, being chased, throws it away, it's intercepted, touchdown USC, Ronald Nunn, they won't catch him, he's at the 10, 5, it's a touchdown USC. The Trojans shined in the running game with Landale White and Herschel Dennis leading the charge. Hand off coming this way, Herschel Dennis steps it in at the 40, stays on his feet up the sideline at the 50. He's at the 45-40, back inside the 35 to the 30, tackled from behind at the 28-yard line by Derek Johnson, trailing the play, and it's first and 10, USC. Reggie Bush's receptions out of the backfield made the Trojan running threat all the more versatile and must have kept the defense constantly guessing from where the next strike would come. All told, the Trojans put up 565 total yards on offense. Though this play was whistled dead, an amazing one-handed catch by Mike Williams was a thing of uncanny football skill. In the second half, the Trojans began to distance themselves from their competition. 
After Washington recovered an SC fumble and threatened to make a game of it, a sack and forced fumble by Kenichi Udezi brought up an impossible third and 50. After getting the ball back thanks to the defensive highlight, it was Brandon Hancock out of the backfield on a wheel route touchdown reception that finished off the Huskies in convincing fashion. I think it was a great game for Will Poole when he had his matchups with Reggie. He did a great job. Uh, Reggie, you know, he caught some balls in that game, and, and he's a terrific football player, but he couldn't control the game. We was just rolling, you know, the offense was clicking, defense was clicking, and, you know, they couldn't stop us. There was nothing they could do. It's a great day. It's a great day to be a Trojan. As always, we play for the honor and respect of all those guys that have been here before. This is homecoming. We all want to see it. We happen to have greatness with us tonight. The greatest football player I ever saw, Ronnie Lotz with us. Yeah. 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 He's just bringing that spirit that he brought for years and years and years in this locker room. I promise you, he's feeling just like you are. It does feel good, doesn't it? Yeah. It does feel tense. It feels a little bit tense today, doesn't it? That's just the way it's supposed to be. We want to play with great, with great energy out there today, great enthusiasm for this game. Let's make sure we light it up. Let's go, boys. Let's go. go. Yeah, told you on three. One, two, three. Let's show the universe, man. Let's show the world. November 1st, 2003 was a cool, crisp day in Los Angeles. Things would stay heated up on the football field as the number three Trojans were set to take on the number six Cougars of Washington State. The Cougars were on a seven game winning streak and came to the City of Angels boasting the conference's best defense. The first quarter was played with the tension expected of such an important matchup. Sloppy play by both teams kept the score close, and at the end of the first quarter, it was only 3 to nothing USC. The USC defense did its part to keep the Cougars out of the end zone and off the scoreboard in the first 15 minutes. And that tough defensive performance set up the Trojan offense to get things going on this nifty 24-yard touchdown run by Herschel Dennis. A botched snap on a Cougar punt was knocked out of the end zone by Kyle Bassler for a safety. And on the very next Washington State punt, the Cougs couldn't get it right again as Reggie Bush down the ball on the five-yard line deep in Cougar territory. But the Trojans failed to punch it in the end zone and went into halftime clinging to a 15 to 10 lead. The second half saw more of the same dominating Trojan defense that earned them a reputation as one of the best in the land. For the game, the Trojan defense held the Cougars to minus 25 yards rushing. Steve Smith, the state of California's all-time high school receptions leader, broke the game open with a 55-yard touchdown reception, the first of his SC career. Following a turnover, Glendale White busted through the Vaughn Cougar defense for this 48-yard run. Moments later, the Trojans delved far into their bag of tricks, revealing another left-handed quarterback in Mike Williams. That neatly improvised pass completion set up another TD pass. Matt Leinert second of three on the day. This time, the former quarterback, Mike Williams, back at his more familiar wide receiver position. The punishing USC defense kept the game out of reach for the Cougars. Aided by heavy pressure from Wild Bunch 2, Darnell Bing's interception in the end zone allowed him to showcase his skills as a gifted tailback in a dusty jersey number 20. Revered by Trojan fans as that of Heisman winner Mike Garrett. Coupled with the impressive running of Lendale White, the Trojans won the Battle of the West in impressive fashion, 43 to 16. It, you know, it was a battle of, I think it was top six teams. Um, first time in, I forget the number of years in the Pac 10's history that, um, you know, two teams that high, highly ranked were able to, you know, square it off and play a game. Um, you know, they were a great ball team when they came down here and played. And, uh, you know, we came out and, 
uh, the coaches did a great job preparing us for the ball game and you know defense played a great ball game and so did the offense and we were able to light up the scoreboard and the defense was able to you know shut them down pretty good so many guys so many guys celebrated their final homecoming so we want to make sure to recognize that and i don't know how, how wrapped up in homecoming you get but when you look back someday you'll realize that when you do come back when you do come back remember this day you did something really special today you had 80 something thousand fans out there with everything on the line and you just did what you're capable of doing one more time in beautiful fashion and you set us you positioned us for a great finish to the season the steadily rising Trojans were off once again to the desert, this time to take on the Arizona Wildcats in the hopes of keeping their national championship dreams alive. After a second bye week, USC was determined to guard against another devastating letdown similar to the one experienced earlier in the season. But this time, the Trojans stormed out of the gate as Mike Williams and Matt Leiner connected on three touchdown passes in the first half. Liner drops the throw, looking in the end zone. Mike Williams there, makes the catch. He's in the end zone with the ball. That's a touchdown, USC. Liner to Williams. This is a recording. SC showed off another weapon in their potent offense when tight end Greg Gunther caught this 20-yard touchdown pass to make the score 35 to nothing. It's Greg Gunther double covered, and the big tight end comes down with the ball in the end zone. The Trojan defense was equally dominating and kept Arizona out of the end zone and off the scoreboard for the entire game. Well, this is just, he, uh, Hefner's dreaming. He's just dreaming. He's just, please, God, somebody well, come down with it and catch that? it. Glendale White's 43-yard touchdown run at the end of the third quarter was more proof positive that the Trojans were an elite team in college football. I think we're a first senior class to go five years straight. Um, first senior class, first fifth year seniors to go five years straight and never lose UCLA. So it, it feels great, you know, the fact that we can walk around and no one can say, oh, UCLA is better. They, can, they can't say it. There's no way possible. we got five years on them. Got two things, two things. We want to see a gorgeous Trojan spirit out there. Big energy today. And I want you to play real smart. I want you to play the way we've been prepared to play, the way you know how to play. We don't need to do nothing out of the lines, nothing. I don't want anybody doing anything other than the style and the way that we have become different than the rest. Be that way today. Have a great time playing ball. Be awesome. Battle for Los Angeles was played before 93,000 fans at the Coliseum. City bragging rights were on the line, and the Trojans have had the upper hand for four years in a row. It was a perfect Southern California day, the envy of fans across the autumn-swept country. Mike Williams' catch and subsequent punishment of a UCLA defender got the Trojans started. Fans of this rivalry would sit and watch Matt Liner and Mike Williams play pitch and catch up and down the field. The two Trojan sophomores connected for 181 yards and two touchdowns in the first half alone. Pass throws end zone, Mike Williams, touchdown, USC! As usual, the defense refused to be outdone by the efficient Trojan offense. And Mike Patterson's scoop and score allowed the defensive line to show off its own speed and playmaking ability. Rolls, throws, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Might have been intercepted. We might have another two-point conversion return in this ballgame. I don't believe it if they can get all the way down the field. John Cody just missed a chance to score on a failed two-point conversion for the Bruins running out of steam before falling just short of the goal line. The defense held the Bruins to a single rushing yard in the first half. Freshman Reggie Bush took this kickoff 96 yards for the score. Every stride bringing USC one step closer to a conference championship and the trip to the Rose Bowl. Touchdown, USC! What kind of speed does he have? Angles don't matter. The 
five wins in a row over the beleaguered Bruins was a series first for USC and extended Pete Carroll's undefeated record in November. Coliseum was great. I never, I never played in a stadium like that. Just playing in that rivalry with, with uh, UCLA, there was a lot of people out there. You know, it was just, it was going crazy. It was crazy. Well, we teach here, you know, never to loaf, and I'm one of the players that pretty much do what the coach is telling me to do. And you know, on that play, I was, you know, designed to drop in the coverage. And what happened was I was dropping in the coverage, and as I saw, I think it was uh, Kevin or I'm not sorry, uh, Ronald Nunn or Marcel Almond get a sack. Um, I, you know, started running after the ball, and I seen, you know, a lot of people, you know, coming after the ball, and just luckily, it, you know, popped out, and I was, you know, hustling to the ball, and I got to, you know, scoop it up and get a touchdown. So it was a great feeling. For them, they had nothing to lose, but for us, we had everything to gain. So we took the approach that with this, we, we have opportunity. For, we, at that time, we thought to go to the national championship considering if Oklahoma lost. So we saw that as a game to, to shut down three very nice offense players as a defense and an opportunity to make a statement as a defense when everyone considers so strongly our offense. USC played host to Oregon State in the final game of the season in a nationally televised matchup that was sure to leave a lasting impression on the entire country. The Trojans didn't miss a beat and played impressive football in this December game. Matt Leiner continued his solid play by throwing for five touchdown passes in the game. Although Mike Williams' one-handed grab in Washington didn't count, this one sure did and was immediately talked about as probably the greatest catch in USC football history. Williams showed off his skills as a blocker as well crunching a beaver defender as Reggie Bush reversed fields on his way to a scintillating, jaw-dropping run. At the 30, the 20, he's at the 15, the 10, down to the six-yard line. What a block by Mike Williams on the reverse of field by Reggie Bush, who makes it happen all by himself. Bush got in on the receiving action by catching two touchdown passes. Matt Leinert set a Pac-10 record with his 35 touchdown passes on the year. And at one point, he went 212 consecutive passes without an interception, another Pac-10 record. All this as a sophomore quarterback on the biggest stage in the West. The Trojans' big play defense has always believed in the importance of turnovers. Will Poole not only got the ball into Trojan hands, but put it in the end zone for six points. Coach Carroll's philosophy since day one has always been about the ball. Protect the ball on offense. Get the ball on defense. Create turnovers. As a direct result, Coach Carroll's club leads the nation in turnover margin. And five against OSU is sure to bolster that feat. As if that wasn't enough, the special teams were in on four blocked kicks. All in all, the dominating performance against Oregon State was the perfect mirror for an entire season of dominance. No Pac-10 team has ever gone more than four games in a row with 40 or more points. With this 52-28 victory, USC set a new standard with seven consecutive games over 40. In the glow of the celebration on the floor of the Coliseum that December night, no one could have been ready for the controversy that followed. Three teams, USC, Oklahoma, and Louisiana State, had identical records. The Trojans were voted the nation's top team, but the VCS computer system voted in Oklahoma and Louisiana State for the Sugar Bowl. Suddenly, USC found itself with even a bigger prize, the Rose Bowl on January 1st. There were some doubts, some controversy, and some talk. But we knew something the so-called experts didn't. There was nothing. 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 Like playing in the Rose Bowl on January 1st. We made the Rose Bowl our home. The big shoulders of the San Gabriel Mountains framing our picture as Southern California and Michigan meet in the Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup. 
the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. And for those out in this part of the country to have that matchup means all is right with the world. It, it was a real breathtaking experience, you know, because how many people can say that they, they play for a national championship? How many people can actually say that they even play for the Rose Bowl? To be able to play in the Rose Bowl, you know, playing for USC, have a chance to play for a national championship, I mean, that was just, you know, a dream come true. I couldn't ask for, you know, better surroundings for me to be able to play the final game of my career. Here's a great Pete Carroll story. On the field before the game, of course, he was the secondary coach for the Buckeyes in the 1980 Rose Bowl, and that was a great game. We, the Trojans, won 17-16. So here it is, Rose Bowl, game day, about two hours before kickoff. Coach Carroll's on the field walking around, and I said, hey, Coach, how you doing? First thing out of his mouth is, what was it like this? He starts pretending he's Kevin Williams, making a fake to the corner, going to the post. Was it right about here, Paul? Ball coming down, jogs into the end zone, touchdown. Wasn't that it? He said, I never should have called that blitz. Never should have called that blitz. <laughs> but here's a guy thinking about that play, you know, 25, 20 some years ago, uh, when he's got a game to play for the number one ranking, the national title. He's thinking about something that happened 25 years ago. That's how cool, calm, and collected he is. This is how we're going to do it, fellas. It's just one. It's just one. It could be just one person, it'll be two or three teams. It'll be one whole team. One team, baby. You got to feel it. You got to feel it right here. You can't have no individuals. Ain't no individuals now. It's all about the choice, baby. The choice this guy here, the choice is going to win it. The choice is going to get us further on. So always going to be the choice, baby. But let's sit for ourselves within this now. Let's make our own go right here from the start. Let's get this going real quick. Let's be real clear. This is, this is as good as it gets for us, boys. We wait all year long to put ourselves in this position, and it's there. I want to remind you, you need to do what we know how to do. Don't make it up. Don't make it up. We don't need to. In any way, Capitals will go in a minute. When we play, we beat our heart as one. As one. We'll be together the whole way through. I want to see guys flying around on these kicking teams like we ain't never seen before. For this, this crowd, they ain't seen us play now. They don't know what we're like in the Big Ten. Let's Double wide at the top of the picture, and Navarre looks that way and goes that way, and it is dropped by Braylon Edwards. You can't throw it, no matter. Navarre put it right on his hands, and he dropped it. He had a step on Will Poop. Jason Avant is the man way down at the bottom, along with Calvin Bell. Calvin Bell moving around now, number 27. He's from Simi Valley, California. And for a loss at the 41-yard line, Jason Leach finds a crack and comes through to deck Chris Perry. And Navarre looks left, drops the ball, covers it back at the 49-yard line. Marcel Amon came in, got just a little touch on it, just enough as he was starting to cuck it. And he dropped it. It'll be second down and seven. Backfield is empty. Navarre back, it come in, and it got in. It was Will Poole on a corner blitz. They moved the wide out to the other side of the field to give him trips, and that left the door wide open for Will Poole. Michigan had two tight ends lined up to this side of the field, too. Here's Minnery, here's Massaquoi, and here is Will Poole. And Will Poole with a real burst here as there's a bust in the uh, blocking assignment. Sarge came on the blitz as well. Michigan has only allowed 15 sacks coming into today, two already on this first drive. In Garrett Rebus, this one is 47 yards. That's his career long. He had one of those at Iowa. And it's blocked. And Michigan downs it. Sean Cody, number 84, blocked it.
Single back. Leinert's pass outside. Ball completed to Brendan Hancock out of the backfield. The fullback for a first down. Lindale White had come into the ball game, but now they've emptied the backfield, and that gives them four wideouts with White coming to the bottom of the picture. Leinert gets some heat, goes down into the corner, and it's touchdown. Terry Colbert. He beat Marcus Curry. Perfect start for Matt Leiner and what he saw, he liked. Marcus Curry, number 30, in bump and run press coverage, getting the ball off before Marlon Jackson can get to him, and look at this throw. Not much room for error, perfectly in the hands of Kerry Colbert. Yeah, I think it was it was a real special game, knowing that it was my last game personally, uh, the magnitude of the game, you know, what the game, what we were playing for, we were playing for a, a share of the national title and, and seeing all the alumni on the sidelines and knowing that everybody was watching the game and just the stage it was on and being that it was in the Rose Bowl. I mean, there's so many little things that led up to the game, but, you know, once it kicked off, I mean, I think the guys just, we kind of just had that, that, that will to win. Leonard bumps it going deep. Terry Colbert got it. Marcus Curry couldn't keep pace with him. Matt Leonard continues with the hot hand. He gets good pass protection here. Watch the pump fake there to make sure there's no safety in the middle of the field. But Marcus Curry never looks back for where this ball is. There's nobody in the middle of the field, so Leonard can just air it out. And Curry desperately diving at the feet of Colbert. What a catch with a guy hanging all over your feet. There's a couple of noble Trojans. Marcus Allen, Ronnie Lott. There's a lot of folks here. I think we just saw Desmond Howard. Uh, Justin Fargus is here. First down from the 17 for Michigan now. McGuire getting some heat and goes down. Back inside the 10 yard line. The first man to get him was Udezi. And, and that all plays into how Pete Carroll calls his defense. Seen three sacks early in the first quarter, all by defensive backs. Gives the offense a lot of different looks. Now he will turn loose just the front four. And the best pass rusher on that front four is number 94. He gets inside of Adam Stenovich there for another sack for SC. <laughs> third down. The ball is on the nine-yard line. Third down and 18 for Michigan. Big play here. Trojans trying to pin him. Navarre's pass is away, and it's incomplete. Thrown behind. Brock intercepted. Bounced off his foot. Went off his foot, and it's picked off by Tatupu, and Tatupu is inside the five-yard line. It hit Braylon on the foot. Braylon Edwards, the intended receiver, and the ricochet went right to Tatupu, and lo and behold, the Trojans are knocking on the door. This, this pressure is forcing the VAR to throw the ball too soon. Braylon Edwards is never even looking for this ball. Right in the seam there, ball kind of tailed away from Edwards off his heel and up into the air and he heads up by Lofa to Tupu. Look at the gift. Wow. Huh. Well, that's an unbelievable play off the left heel of Braylon Edwards into the hands of Lofa to Tupu. Southern California trying to cash in a fortuitous turnover. You reckon they're going to go right with it? No, going to go left with it. And touchdown, White. There's testimony to the strength of Lindell White. Jeremy Lasseur, the senior corner, had him. Couldn't hold it. Three big plays in a row for Lindell White hanging on to the ball, making a key block, and then breaking the tackle here. 
of uh, Jeremy Lasour, as you said, Keith, and diving in for the score. Big play for SC. It looked like Michigan may have had some momentum there. Killian for the point. Malone's a holder. Snaps good. Kicks good. 14 to nothing, Southern California. The turnover produced this touchdown off the heel of Raylan Edwards, taken by Tatupu, and then finally on third down, they squeeze it into the end zone with White getting the score, and that's why you have 14. We've had the ball five times, scored twice, screw up on a penalty, dropped the ball in the end zone. They stopped us one time. They cannot stop us. They cannot stop us. They're playing real soft on first down, coming after us with the Bears and all that on second. And we, we know exactly what we want to get done. Just execute, and it's just a reminder. It's what Coach Carroll talked about before the game. What is it about? Us. Us, us and the ball, right? Us and the ball. We hold on the ball. We don't turn it over. This thing's over. I want to go out in the second half, put together a drive, score a touchdown, put on the bed. Everybody understand? And then we keep the foot to the pedal, and we go, and we go, and we go. We need to hold on the ball a little bit. Our defense is wearing down south. They're on the field too long. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. All right? Nothing changes. Let's rip their arms off now. You understand? Get your head down. Let's go. These guys are going to play four quarters on this man. Get out there and play. You know what I'm saying? There's Trojan ball out there. Trojan ball. It's a long time. There has never been a better second half team than us that I've ever seen. There's a reason for that. It's because you understand how to do things right longer than the other guys. It ain't about being crazy in the head. It's about going out there and doing it right. Play after play after play. Now remember this one too. Here it is, second half ball game. We're ready to go. Are we going to hold back and get cautious? Hell no. We're no. going after it every step of the way on both sides of the football. Let's go. We're the goddamn punter, ready? I want to go get Let's go. Every step of the way, we're going to put in this fire. I want a big old fire like we're throwing gasoline on it. Let's go. Let's go. Get fires down. Just starting the second half of play, Leinert's pass sideline, Mike Williams first down, Michigan 47-yard line. And that's where Mike Williams and, and Matt Leinert are so dangerous. They can read the defense, see that Marcus Curry is playing about five or six yards off of Williams. So just throw him the little quick hitch route right here. Throw it to the outside, make him spin away from the tackle down the sidelines. Easy conversion on second and short. Massey's out, Boyer's out, Stevens out. Ball is thrown for Kirby Carver. What a catch! A penalty flag goes down. He walks into the end zone, gets the touchdown call, and it looked like he made that catch one-handed. Well, I think he's been watching the highlights of Jason Avant and Michael Williams because he did catch this ball one-handed, Keith. Let's Jeremy see about Lesort the flag. It's going to get called for the pass interference. Pass interference. Obviously, will be On a declined. Touchdown, SC. Declined. Touchdown. You could just feel that we were so close to winning the national championship that there was no way that we were going to let that get away. There was no way we were going to let that get away, especially what had happened and transpired the weeks before that. Uh, with the teams, you know, leapfrogging us and jumping ahead of us in the polls and things like that. It was something I think that, you know, added an extra incentive for the, for the team to go out there and make a statement, and we did. On first down, throwing again, but uh, runs out of time. As Udezi, you're not going to keep Kenichi treed too long. He, he can hold him off for a while, but... He is a force, and he went in and got John Navarre. That's his second sack this afternoon. He seems to be the man at quarterback next year for the World Series. This is Bush. Out of bounds at the 10-yard line. First and goal, Southern California. And the key block on the play, Keith, was from Kerry Colbert, the senior wide receiver, is having a great day catching the ball. But he held on to his block, 83 on the outside there, took down Jeremy Lasour. That gets Bush at the corner, and once he gets the corner, he's going to take it all the way to the 10. Well, I think the key of any game is domination up front. Uh, that can be uh, run or pass, but uh, you have to have the guys up front uh, to set the tone of the game, both offensively and defensively. Uh, you know, everyone kind of starts off strong, but it's the third and the fourth quarter which, you know, separates the champs from the chumps, and the Trojans uh, are men, and they are definitely the champs. Second down. Ball back at the 
Here's Williams throwing it. Mike Williams throws to Leonard. Touchdown. He's been begging that play all season long, and he finally gets it in the Rose Bowl. And that wasn't just any old pass. That was a perfect strike from number one to number double one. Mike Williams to Matt Leonard. Where will they get hit next? Really took his time. One step, let it go. Liner wide open for the easy score. Killeen's point. Good. It was a moment, you know, for people to, to hold on to. And the people down at that end of the stadium, probably more so than ever, because they were so close to it. Uh, the, the, the exchange was really clear. Nor Norms, you know, we just had just got hit and fumbled the ball out of bounds. It was like second and 18 goal to go, you know, and, uh, and Norm said, you know, what do you, what do you think about the, you know, the reverse pass? And I said, it's a great idea. Go for it. You know, because it's so hard to get in from there. Let's take a shot at it right there. And boy, if it just an instant later, here it goes just an impeccably executed play by really good athletes. You know, uh, the ball's flipped from a good player to a good player to a good player, you know, and, and, uh, uh, and a great catch and finish. It, it really took the breath away. It was such a cool moment in sports because it was a perfect play back to the shotgun for Michigan on fourth down and 22 this might be the bell ringer right here they sack Navarre Sartz and Tutufu and that pretty much seals it that is the ninth sack of the Michigan quarterback and with fourth down in a mile a lot of defensive coaches would play a very soft zone. SC comes with a full out blitz and gets Navarre one more time. Pete, on behalf of the Tournament of Roses and the Rose Bowl, congratulations on your victory today. 2004 champion of the Rose Bowl. I know, I mean, I've already been asked about five times how to explain what it feels like, and I don't have explanation for it. But I do know how grateful I am to be part of this university, to be part of, of this, this group of men right in here, with the coaches and all of the people that have supported us, and all you guys are players. I'm telling you, fellas, I'm so happy and proud. Yeah. lessons about what just happened. We just kept staying with it, fellas. We just kept staying with what we do. And, and you went out in the second half and you kicked their ass again and got it done exactly the way we've been doing it all the time. We know how to do this. We need to be darn proud of it. We need to remember it and take it with us. To the seniors that are on their way out, man, what a gift. because offensive line was on their way to having an 11 minute drive to end this football game. It had nothing to do with that turnover. To finish the game on the field exactly the way we want to do it. Check this out. Check this out. This football team had given up 14 sacks, I think, all season long. We had nine to die. Nazel, Frosty, uh, Michael, uh, Pat, good. I'm going to miss all kinds of guys, but I, I want to just make sure. Let's do this with all the right stuff, all the right style, all the right love. It's been a great, great run for us. You've hung together through it all. It doesn't matter whether they came from the Midwest or the freaking Southeast. <laughs> we took them off yeah. many places. You did just a great job all the way through it. Well, I want to send this message. Listen, I don't want you talking about next year. It ain't about next year. It's about New Year's Day. That's what happened. <laughs> Room that doesn't realize what we're going to do when we get down, get back down to business. There's not a guy oh, in here. We're just getting freaking started, fellas. Woo!
But right now, it's about this day. Let's celebrate the first day of the new year. We got a little party going on. Yeah. Some of us, well, I would say some of you are not old enough to remember. But some of us who have been around a long time, this was a long time coming. And all I can tell you is when I got on that field and looked at him, I said, how about those Trojans? This is the oldest national championship award. It's the one that we think is the most important award anywhere in college football. And it is a tremendous honor for me to present this award on behalf of the oldest and largest news organization in the world to Pete Carroll and the USC Trojan football team. distinct honor and privilege of proclaiming today, Wednesday, January 21st, 2004, as USC Trojan Day. Uh, this is Champions Day here at the White House, and it is my honor to welcome some great champs. These are impressive athletes behind me, but I think if you really look beyond the athletics, you'll find some decent and compassionate people as well. These athletes, in the most part, understand they have a responsibility upholding to the communities in which they live. They understand it's one thing to be a champ on the field, it's another to be a champ off the field. By setting the right example for some youngsters, wonder what it means to be a champ. By sending good messages about right and wrong behavior, and by volunteering in their community, the USC football team makes a trip to the USC Children's Hospital every year to visit patients and to give gifts and to sign autographs. You know what they're doing? They're bringing some sunshine into somebody's life. That's what they're doing. And then there's the ring. I mean, it symbolizes five years hard work. Uh, people, people always tell me I should wear it facing out you know, so other people can see it, but I always tell them I put in five years hard work. The ring means everything to me. You know, it just solidifies the season. It puts a stamp on the season, the ring. National champions, you can't take that away, you know? 2003, USC was the national champion. It's, it's done. It's a done deal. You know, to wear this ring, you know, it's not only, you know, just a, you know, just a, you know, a, a, a gift that you get after, you know, you win or you, you, you finish something. It means something because, you know, 11 guys on offense and defense throughout the whole team, special teams, you know, even the guys who don't get to play, we all, you know, put together a great season. We all tried hard and we were fortunate enough to be the best team at the end of the season. That's one of the greatest things that I've ever accomplished up to this point in my life. And I really appreciate this, this, this university, you know, for offering its facilities to guys like me so that we can achieve something like this. And it's, it's just, it's, it's very rewarding to know that hard work pays off. You see, it really is simple. There are no shortcuts. It's all about hard work. And to borrow a phrase from Pete Carroll, it's all about one heartbeat. And that's how it is here at USC. It's a good time to be a USC Trojan. I look forward to seeing you at many games in the future. Fight on. So long, everybody.